Good morning, it's Pastor Mike here from Georgetown Church of Nazarene, and this is our uh, scripture reading for today from the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, today's readings are going to be found in Psalm 78, and our, our morning psalm reading is verses 1 through 39. Uh, then Joel is our Old Testament passage, chapter 1, verse 13, through chapter 2, verse 11. In the New Testament, we're going to be looking at Revelation chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, and the Gospel of Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 35. And we'll close out with our, our evening psalm from the Book of Common Prayer, which is Psalm 78, verses 40 through 72. So Psalm 78 is a fairly long psalm, and it's broken into two parts, one for morning and one for evening, according to the daily office in the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, if you need to, go ahead and take a moment, pause this video, and grab your Bible so you can follow along, read along with me. And uh, we'll get started here. Uh, now, this is Election Day in the United States. And uh, before we get started with our scripture readings, let's just go ahead and pray that God would guide and direct the hearts of the voters um, and the decisions that are to be made today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we come before you in these moments to focus upon your word. And Father, to listen for your voice, to speak to us through your scripture. Father, we also pray today for those who are participating in elections across the United States, the various races for uh, positions of authority and trust, Lord, that many have been campaigning these last months, in some cases years for. Father, we pray that voters would vote their conscience. Father, they would vote in accordance with how you lead them to vote. Would those who proclaim Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior be certain to listen for your still small voice. And Father, would you speak clearly to them? Father, regardless of the outcome of the election, we pray that you would guide and direct those in leadership. Father, make known to them your will. And Father, raise up people around them to help inspire them to pursue you above all in your kingdom, your desires. Father, be with us in our moments together this morning. And as we look to your word, speak to us anew, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Psalm chapter 78, verses 1 through 39, our morning uh, reading. Uh, in the Ryrie Study Bible, it says this about Psalm 78, just as a way of introduction. Asaph, who wrote this, recites the early history of the nation in order to warn future generations against a repetition of unfaithfulness. He invites in verses 1-11 through 11, the people to recall their provocation of God in the wilderness experience. In verses 12-39, to 39, he brings out their ingratitude during the exodus in verses 40-55 through 55, and their unfaithfulness during the period of the judges in verses 56-72. through 72. And we'll read this together. And see all of these ebbs and flows of Israel's history. Listen, O my people, to my instruction. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not conceal them from their children, but tell to the generation to come the praises of the Lord, and his strength and his wondrous works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should teach them to their children, that the generation to come might know, even the children yet to be born, that they may arise and tell them to their children, that they should put their confidence in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments and not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not prepare its heart and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The sons of Ephraim were archers equipped with bows, yet they turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot his deeds and his miracles that he had shown them. He wrought wonders before their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zon. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters stand up like a heap. Then he led them with a cloud by day and all the night with a light of fire. He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them abundant drink like the ocean depths. He brought forth streams also from the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. Yet they still continued to sin against him, to rebel against the Most High in the desert. And in their heart they put God to the test by asking food according to their desire. Then they spoke against God. They said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock so that waters gushed out and streams were overflowing. 
Can he give bread also? Will he provide meat for his people? Therefore the Lord heard and was full of wrath, and a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also mounted against Israel, because they did not believe in God, and did not trust in his salvation. Yet he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna upon them to eat, and gave them food from heaven. Man did, man did eat the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he directed the south wind. When he rained down, when he rained meat upon them like the dust, even winged fowl like the sand of the seas, then he let them fall in the midst of their camp, round about their dwellings. So they ate and were filled, and their desire he gave to them. Before they had satisfied their desire while their food was in their mouths, the anger of God rose against them and killed some of their stoutest ones and subdued the choice men of Israel. In spite of all this, they still sinned and did not believe in his wonderful works. So he brought their days to an end in futility and their years in sudden terror. When he killed them, they, then they sought him and returned and searched diligently for God. And they remembered that God was their rock and the most high God, their redeemer. But they deceived him with their mouth and lied to him with their tongue, for their heart was not steadfast toward him, nor were they faithful in his covenant. But he, being compassionate, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. And often he restrained his anger and did not arouse all his wrath. Thus he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes and does not return. We'll conclude chapter 78, no, Psalm 78 in our... Uh, closing moments together. We turn now to the book of Joel, uh, chapter 1, verse 13. We'll be reading through chapter 2, verse 11. The prophet Joel records, Gird yourselves with sackcloth, and lament, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Come, spend the night in sackcloth, O ministers of my God. For the grain offering and drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is near, and it will come as destruction from the Almighty. Has not food been cut off before our eyes, gladness and joy from the house of our God? The seeds shrivel under their clods, and storehouses are desolate. The barns are torn down, for the grain is dried up. How the beasts groan, the herds of cattle wander aimlessly, because there is no pasture for them. Even the flocks of sheep suffer. To you, O Lord, I cry, for fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame has burned up all the trees of the field. Even the beasts of the field pant for you, for the water brooks are dried up, and fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Blow a trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. Surely it is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the dawn is spread over the mountain, so there is a great and mighty people. There has never been anything like it, nor will there be again after it. <coughs> excuse me. Nor will there be again after it to the years of many generations. A fire consumes before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, but a desolate wilderness behind them, and nothing at all escapes them. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like war horses, so they run. With the noise of chariots, they leap on the tops of, ma of the mountains, like the crackling of a flame of fire consuming the stubble, like a mighty people arranged for battle. Before them, the people are in anguish. All faces turn pale. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like soldiers, and they each march in line, nor do they deviate from their paths. They do not crowd each other. They march everyone in his path. When they burst through the defenses, they do not break ranks. They rush on the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter through the windows like a thief. Before them, the earth quakes. The heavens tremble. The sun and the moon grow dark, and the stars lose their brightness. The Lord utters his voice before his army. Surely his camp is very great, for strong is he who carries out his word. The day of the Lord is indeed great and very awesome, and who, who can endure it? The prophet Joel has been, of course, talking about the day of desolation. Um, ultimately, God's punishment coming upon the earth, and who can endure it? 
We turn now from the prophet Joel to the book of Revelation. In chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, and this passage begins talking about the second coming of Christ um, and begins with some announcements. Revelation chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. After these, I heard something like a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, because his judgments are true and righteous. For he has judged the great harlot who is corrupting the earth with her immorality, and he has avenged the blood of his bondservants on her. And a second time they said, Hallelujah! Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sits on the throne, saying, Amen! Hallelujah! And a voice came from the throne, saying, Give praise to our God, all you his bondservants, you who fear him, the small and the great. Then I heard something like the voice of a great multitude, and like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Then I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren, who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Even with desolation on the horizon, there's more to come. The return, the coming of the Lord in power and great glory. Hallelujah, the Lord God Almighty reigns. We turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 14. Verses 25 to 35, and in the New American Standard Version, which is what I'm reading, this section is uh, titled, Concerning Indulgent People, and this is part of uh, Jesus' teaching in the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 14, beginning in verse 25, says, Now large crowds were going along with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who observe it begin to ridicule him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, when he sets out to meet another king in battle, will not first sit down and consider whether he is strong enough with 10,000 men to encounter the one coming against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So then, none of you can be my disciple, who does not give up all his possessions. Therefore, salt is good. But if even salt has become tasteless, with what will it be seasoned? It is useless, either for the soil or the manure pile, it is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. We are called to take up our cross and follow after Jesus. We're called to set aside the things of this world to follow Jesus. We're called to make nothing else as important as our pursuit of God. When other things have our attention and our devotion, that diminishes our relationship with God. But when we give God our full attention and devotion, He becomes greater and everything else becomes less. And He has the opportunity to redeem and restore to us the other areas of life which we have surrendered over to Him. That's the call of the disciple of Jesus. To give up this world, to focus on the kingdom of God. That said, we still live in this world. And we are called to live in faithfulness to God in this world and allow Him to redeem us and our way of life. Psalm 78, verses 40 through 72. This is our closing passage for today. And it's a continuation of our opening psalm reading Psalm 78, verses 40 through 72. Speaking of the people of Israel, how often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Again and again they tempted God and pained the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power, the day when he redeemed them from the adversary. 
when he performed his signs in Egypt and his marvels in the field of Zoan, and turned their rivers to blood, and their streams they could not drink. He sent among them swarms of flies which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their crops to the grasshopper, and the product of their labor to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hailstones, and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave over their cattle also to the hailstones, and their herds to bolts of lightning. He sent upon them his burning anger, fury, and indignation, and trouble, a band of destroying angels. He leveled a path for his anger. He did not spare their soul from death, but gave over their life to the plague, and smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the first issue of their virility in the tents of Ham. But he led forth his own people like sheep, and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them safely, so that they did not fear, but the sea engulfed their enemies. So he brought them to this holy land, his holy land, to this hill country, which his right hand had gained. He also drove out the nations before them, and apportioned them for an inheritance by measurement, and made the tribes of Israel dwell in their tents. Yet they tempted and rebelled against the Most High God, and did not keep his testimonies, but turned back and acted treacherously like their fathers. They turned aside like a treacherous bow. For they provoked him with their high places, and aroused his jealousy with their graven images. When God heard, he was filled with wrath, and greatly abhorred Israel, so that he abandoned the dwelling place at Shiloh, the tent which he had pitched among men, and gave up his strength to captivity and his glory into the hand of the adversary. He also delivered his people to the sword, and was filled with wrath at his inheritance. Fire devoured his young men, and his virgins had no wedding songs. His priests fell by the sword, and his widows could not weep. Then the Lord awoke as if from sleep, like a warrior overcome by wine. He drove his adversaries backward. He put on them an everlasting reproach. He also rejected the tent of Joseph and did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. And he built his sanctuary like the heights, like the earth which he has founded forever. He also chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. From the care of the ewes with the suckling lambs, he brought him to shepherd Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them with his skillful hands. Mankind has tempted and tried God over and over again. The Israelites, certainly. We have that recorded well throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament. But God never gave up on his people. He exercised wrath at times, but he exercised grace and mercy far more often. He continues to exercise those today. He continues to raise up for himself his people in a sinful world. He's offered us hope. He's offered us opportunity that life may be different, that life may be redeemed and restored through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we faithfully follow after him. We seek him. And we spend time asking for him to make himself known to us anew each and every day. Hey, I hope that you have a blessed day in the Lord. And I look forward to seeing you next time as we lift our voices and our hearts together in Scripture and seek to hear God's voice. May God bless you as you go throughout this day.